Hello YouTube, as you can see here, I have a lot of Star Wars stuff, and by a lot, I mean I have music books, real books, tapes, games, Nintendo 64 cartridges, you name it. Look at that Pulp Fiction laser disc out of there, because that's not Star Wars. And, I, and I'm watching Return of the Jedi from my letterbox laser disc here. Let's start off. Here is a book of music from the Star Wars trilogy. We got music from Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. It's all in the key of B flat for trumpet. It's pretty nifty stuff. I actually really enjoyed playing this music because I know it very well. Here we have a Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones book for clarinet, even though I play trumpet. It's still in the key of B flat, which is why I've had it for so long. Probably the, the oldest music book I have that I still play from. Here we have my Return of the Jedi laser disc. It's a gatefold edition. Widescreen. Part of the Faces trilog trilogy release. Here we have my Star Wars A New Hope laser disc. Which is another one of the Faces edition. And here we have Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Gatefold letterbox, just like the other ones. Now here we have two out of the three Faces release of the Star Wars trilogy VHS tapes, poorly resealed by some poor some poor guy at a um, uh, garage sale who wanted to get extra money. I haven't viewed these tapes because they're still resealed and they seem in pretty good shape. I wouldn't know. I've never watched them. Now let's look at some of the games that I have. Here we have the Greatest Hits edition of Star Wars Dark Forces, which is kind of sort of like Doom, but you're hunting down the um, uh, Dark Troopers, which is one of the more interesting spin-offs in the Star Wars galaxy. If, you're, if you have any time to play this, pick this one up. It's probably dirt cheap, it's like five bucks now. But I bought this new for ten bucks at KB Sto at KB Toys, and I still bought games. Took a lot of convincing from my mom. Here we have the double disc game, Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 The Hidden Empire. The first disc is currently in my PS2, that's why it's not in there. This is kind of an on rails full motion video game. That, that's all about um, uh, figuring out the location of a hidden TIE fighter development site. And I believe it's about a cloak TIE Fighters, but I don't remember. I haven't played this game in a long time, and I didn't really have time to finish it when I started it. I've only played through the first missions on this copy. I borrowed this game from a friend years ago when I was in 6th grade, I'm going to say. It's only like half an hour of gameplay, so really I wouldn't, you know, go out there and hunt this game down. But it's kind of cool to have. Because I also have the first Rebel Assault on Sega CD. Here we have Star Wars Demoli Demolition for the Dreamcast, which is like six times better than the PlayStation version in terms of graphics and playability. It's kind of like you may have played on um, uh, Vigilante 8 or Vigilante 8 Second Offense. It's pretty much the same exact game only in the Star Wars universe. There's something below it that's probably some copy game as Resident Evil 3. I do a lot of Dreamcast copying. Here we have Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles. Which is kind of. I don't know, it's an okay game. It's got some really good co op gameplay. But it really hasn't aged very well. In fact, probably. One of the worst Dreamcast games around in terms of Star Wars. Here we have my PC co jewel case copy of Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. This came in the, um, uh, I believe this was the budget edition that was only $10. You could get it at like Media Play. It's got some back cover art and a blank thing here and just a CD. Not, not much to this release. So that looks nothing like Kyle Katarn whatsoever. 
Here we have Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds Clone Campaign, one of my favorite strategy games of all time. It's a very extensive campaign. Here's the install disc for the original one because that case disappeared many years ago. Me and my two sisters and my best friend played this game for years over the local area network until it decided to stop being compatible with XP. But I would definitely go to all ends to pick up this game if you don't have it yet. It's based off of the Age of Empires 2 engine and it is great. Here we have one of my personal favorites, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, which I think is almost better than Jedi Outcast because of its inventive gameplay and the production values are very high. I mean, the case is broken because it's 13 years old, I think. As you can see here, the disc is in pretty good shape. My dad's had this game since I was since it came out, so he's had it since I was about two. There's a disc dedicated entirely to cinematics here. The second disc is entirely cinematics. One of the downfalls of this game is that you can't install the cinematics to your hard drive like you could with games like um, uh, Diablo 2. So that, that's one downside to Jedi Knight. Here we have what's probably my favorite game of all time, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3D. This game I spent many a year playing, and I have it on N64 over here, but it's, uh, excuse me, but it's just not as good. You really need a joystick to enjoy the um, uh, full value of Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3D. Especially if you played it with a joystick on PC since and you have since you were three. Now here we have my two N64 Star Wars games. Shadows of the Empire, which is hit or miss depending on whether you like slow, clunky, platformer shooter and um, uh, on rail sections, but generally I would not run out and buy this one. I have it labeled because I'm lazy. And here we have the N64 copy of Rogue Squadron. Meh. Now here we have Star Wars Rogue Leader, which is the sequel to Rogue Squadron. It's not nearly as good, but the graphics are much better. And in the third Rogue Squadron, there's a co-op version of Rogue Squadron 2, which I would recommend you play rather than this one, because this game is kind of boring. Here we have Star Wars Jedi Starfighter, which is the sequel to Star Wars Starfighter, which I had for a time on Xbox. I don't know where it went. I don't know. You can live without this one, although it has a kind of a, a nifty co-op campaign. Here we have Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords, which is the sequel to the first Knights of the Old Republic. It's got, it's got some pretty cool plot twists. It's an excellent game. You can easily sink 30 hours into your first playthrough and then even more on your second. Here we have the Star Wars The Clone Wars slash Tetris World combo, which is like a $3 game. Clone Wars is okay, Tetris World is pretty cool. Here we have the PS2 copy of Star Wars Battlefront 2, which is definitely the best version of the game due to its, due to its um, uh, great online and decent controls. You should already know what Battlefront 2 is. Here we have the PC copy of Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I found wasn't as good as the PlayStation version due to clunky controls and weird patching and modding. And Here we have the first Battlefront, which I got new in 2004 for my birthday. I have played the living crap out of this game. It's probably one of my favorite play PC games of all time. Much better than the PlayStation 2 and Xbox versions. And here we have my Sega CD copy of Rebel Assault. Which is in pretty good condition and it's a fairly decent game. Uh, I'd say I wouldn't go out and run out and buy this. Here we have my DVD copy of the Star Wars The Clone Wars movie. This is an okay movie. Sorry, it kind of came out of the case. It's got a digital copy. And 
It was entertaining, but I've seen better Star Wars movies. Here we have my DVDs of the original, of the prequel trilogy. This one I got right when it came out, about a week after it came out. This one I got the day Star Wars Episode 2 came out on DVD, and you can tell because it's all taped up because I watched this movie to death when I was a kid. And here's my newest Star Wars DVD, which was given to me by my cousin because he had two copies of it because he lost his and bought a new one and he found his, the one he lost and gave it to me. It's a pretty cool movie. It's probably, arguably, the best of the prequel shows, even though I think 3 is probably the best. Here we have the Star Wars original DVD release of the trilogy. Here we have A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and the bonus material. Here we have one of the many VHS releases of the Star Wars trilogy. Unfortunately, I only have Empire Strikes Back and A New Hope because Return of the Jedi was missing. But I believe this is after they remastered and re-edited the trilogy in 1997. In fact, I'm almost positive it is. Here we have my two full screen THX certified copies of the Phantom Menace on DVD. Which means I have it three times. Here we have one of the earliest VHS releases of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back on VHS. This one is probably early 80s, like maybe, maybe 1985 or before. Here we have, if I can get it out of the makeshift box, because we lost the box. My original Star Wars VHS tape, which is probably from 1977. It's cool stuff. Here we have my stack of Star Wars children's books. You know, the Jedi Quest books, the children's novel of Attack of the Clones, the Boba Fett series, the Jedi Apprentice series, the Revenge of the Sith children's book. A lot of cool stuff here. I have a lot of fond memories of those books. I can get them over here. Here we have my Star Wars Legacy of the Force books. Here's Inferno, Bloodlines, Betrayal, Fury, Exile, Revelation, and Tempest. I'm only missing, I think, Sacrifice, um, and the last book. I mean, perhaps the first one. Here we have Star Wars The Visual Dictionary, which is a really cool book set. You know, it's got pictures of all the weapons from the original trilogy, how they made it, character glossaries. It's fully illustrated. It's pretty huge. Excuse me. I've had this book for years. It, it, it's very decadent. I've always enjoyed books like this. Here we have the Star Wars Attack of the Clones Incredible Cross Sections, which was actually I used to love having books like this. You can see, you know, pictures of Owen Lars swoop bike, the Trade Federation core ship, the Geonosian fighter, the ATTE, cool shit like that. And then last but not least and for the books, we have my Star Wars Incredible Cross Sections, which is beat up to all hell because I was a rough kid on my Star Wars stuff. And then over there we have my Star Wars Monopoly Saga edition. It's basically Monopoly with Star Wars characters. 
but I want to make it below the 15 minute deadline so I'm going to have to cut it off here. See you guys next time.